What's up, everybody? Big D here, or have a nice Dave, or whatever you guys want to call me nowadays. And my buddy Johnny Mayer are coming to you today doing an epic, epic, epic stream with some awesome artists. And you know what it is. Johnny, what do you got to say about it? Oh, man, we've got some fantastic friends, some amazing artists. Um, I think a lot of our viewers have never had the chance to, to meet a lot of these guys and put faces to them. Um, so we're going to see some artwork. We're going to hear some stories. We're going to talk back and forth with the guys about the past, the present, the future. You know, a lot of these guys are working on live projects right now that, that we're still able to get our hands on. And, you know, let's let's show some love for some of the masters of the game. These are truly, truly the masters of the game. So let's let's get this ball rolling. Let's start. Who do we want? Let's bring in Mr. Robert Ball. Bobby B, you guys might know him as. Our overseas connection, we like to call him. Probably one of my favorite guests to have on, my original oh. tops artist to come give hey us Hey, everyone. How you doing, Bobby? Good, thank you. Hope you doing well. Good to see you, brother. Let's see who else we got backstage. Oh, my gosh, who's this? Mr. Jeff Zapata. Hey, how are you? Indy himself. If you've seen Jeff's pictures, he's got the Indiana Jones ad. He's out spelunking. <laughs> this man is I almost a wore one. busy yeah, man I right here. Hey, Bobby, um, it's great to meet you. I actually never met you. I love your art. It's really great. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. No, legendary yourself, so I'm uh, thrilled to be here. Thank you. Oh, We're happy to have you always on, Bobby. You know that. It's always a good time when you come hang out. Who we got back here? Oh, my God, it's Mr. Chris Meeks. <laughs> hey. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> hey. You know, I'm a Bobby, fan. it's good to meet you, man. Yes, same. same oh, are you yeah. friends, Jeff? <laughs> yes, Sandy and I, we were just looking at some of Bobby's uh, videos where he did the uh, Garchville Kids Live. Those are great. Oh, that's what we want to put out. We're trying to put out content, and that's what people want to see. That's why we brought you guys here today. You know, we do these things. Uh -huh. For the artists and for the for the community you know dave and i get nothing from this other than than bringing this out to you guys and i was talking to my wife about you too bobby how you were like i don't belong with these masters bro your work is something else and and i'll vouch for that you Thank are you. you are an amazing artist so listen we got one more person sitting backstage let's not forget this guy no. mr tom bunk hey. 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 how hey. you doing tom, tom? I'm still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're so, thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the so first how do you time I've start this? Something like that. So what? let's let's start right at the beginning. I'm gonna start right with Tom Bunk. Tom, Mr. Bunk, yep. thank you so much for lending your time to us. We have so many of your fans in the in the chat and, and watching live and you know, a lot of people yeah. have never had the chance to listen to you and hear some of these stories. So how did you get into Garbage Trail Kids? How were you brought into the brand? Can you give us a little bit of your history, please? That's a long story. Uh, well, let's start. I lived in Germany and I moved to New York in 1983. <clears throat> and I met Arch Spiegelman and he and I had no idea what to do in New York. And he brought me to Tops. Said they're needing, they need some people, you know, to do cartoons. So I said, okay, it's not my cup of tea, really, but because <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't know what to do actually, because I didn't. I was doing comics in Germany, and uh, I couldn't really continue doing it in New York. So anyway, I went to Tops with uh, Art and. Uh, that was before the Garbage Pail Kids. And uh, so they gave me jobs like uh, boxes to make, uh, you know, to, and then then I did for the, gar then they started the Garbage Pail Kids and they did, uh, <clears throat> I did the uh, back and John did the front and uh, but then it became so too much for him alone. So they asked me to do it, and I had to, you know, 
to learn how to work in his style and so on. But I didn't really realize how big this thing was till, I don't know, series six or seven. I don't know. When I suddenly, when I was in New York, not suddenly, but when I was in the city and I saw public toilets and there were all four with this garbage bin kids uh, stickers and I saw all the wrappers on the floor and and then Art said to me, you know, this is really big. And so then I realized, whatever, I mean, I had the same work to do, so it didn't make a difference. But uh, they, we had really a lot, a lot to work till 88, I think. But I was, <clears throat> because I, I had a studio near Tops which was really very nice because I could go there almost every day and to talk to Mark and Art. And uh, so that was the nicest part was the, you know, the private relationships. And and then of course the garbage pickets, they were just so funny and so disgusting. And we really loved it, you know, the more disgusting, the better. And they gave me also mostly the the most disgusting stuff because John didn't want to do them. <laughs> he threw him under the bus. With all this uh, <laughs> and guts and everything. Anyway, so it, it was the nice thing about it really was that I could go there and have this personal relationship. And anyway, so that went till 88, I think. And then I had to look for work and I went to MAD and worked for them the next 30 years and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you were with MAD Magazine for quite some time, right? You're still, you still work with MAD Magazine, do you not? Well, I worked for them, but not, not at, I mean, they don't make any new, new stuff. Sometimes they do but very seldom. I made a double page just now for the birthday, 70 years, but otherwise it's not. Uh... So that was one reason why I also started to come back to the garbage bill kits because I did a lot other stuff, different stuff. I was painting, I was, you know, doing all kinds of things, but then, <clears throat> At some point, uh, well, I also stopped because when I worked with Jeff, that was really a very, very good relationship. And we had a lot of fun and we were talking on the phone for hours and so on. So it was really nice. But then after that, I don't know who the editor was. I had a, not a very good relationship with him. So I just gave it up kind of, you know. And did yeah. my mad and so on. Yeah, you left the community for a while. You weren't you weren't around. I mean, you you weren't working on the garbage bill kids, and you know nobody could really get in touch with you from the garbage bill kids community. And then you came back, which everybody was. I remember yeah. when you came back, and everybody was like, "Whoa, Tom's in the <laughs> house!" Like, yay! Like, yeah, it was uh, Ira Friedman. Mm -hmm. uh, I met him at a comic convention, and he said, "Why don't you start with uh, you know come back and stuff." And then I said, okay, I can, you know, see. And then I came back and that was quite nice because I'm doing a lot of, uh, you know, because of the computers. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, nobody knew what's going on, you know. It was just it was like, like Walt Disney, you know. Mm -hmm. The artists, they were like in the background and so on. And so now with the computers and so on, there are many relationships and many people write and I write back. So that's kind of nice. That's awesome. So that's that's how, yeah, yeah. All right, that's well, let's... I, I actually want... started art, huh? <laughs> oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. Um, I was just going to, I wanted to toss it over to Jeff real fast. I, I wanted real quick to, to get a quick intro with all you guys. So I'm going to pull Jeff up here to the main okay. screen. Okay. Mr. Zapata, 
<clears throat> legend. I mean, you've been here since the beginning, right? I mean, you you've been around for damn near the whole entire lifespan of GPK, correct? Not at all. No, I I came in actually um, after um, it was already gone um, after the loss. Yeah, didn't after, you watch the documentary, John? Bro, I, I swear to God, I thought I had old <laughs> got Jeff's name on it and stuff. No, yeah. no, it was That's after. Amazing. It was after the lawsuit, and um, GPK was maybe out of commission for like ten years or something or other. Um, but um, and we did, you know, A and S one, and and that's when we got all the old talent back of Tom Bunk and um, John Pound and whoever we could find, and we still couldn't do the old GPK style, and that's and I was assisting with that, and find, and I became an editor on. Um, Series four, and and that's when I got um, John Pound um, to do a, a style guide that we agreed on, without breaking the the lawsuit rules. And I think people show that around sometimes the turnaround thing of the doll that John Pound did, and um, and and the old one was sort of Tom Bunk one um, did after the lawsuit. Um, Tom, you must still have prints of that, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but... I have we had to change. We had to change because of the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. There were too much uh, cabbage patch kids, mm -hmm. so they uh, we had to change it. You know, the eyes, the the whole head, and many people didn't like it. But it wasn't my fault because I was just you know they all had to be like plastic instead of uh, you know material uh, with cracks. There were some changes, and uh, many people didn't like it, but that, you know, that was better than nothing. So, it's, I don't know what's, it started with series six or set five, I don't know exactly now. So, I had to do a model sheet and so on. You know, anyway, uh, it was 80s. <laughs> you know, we had John Pound do another one. And we sort of loosely used some of the rules you had on yours, and then we try to make them still look like Cabbage Patch dolls, but without making them look like Cabbage Patch dolls, more like dolls, you know. But mm -hmm. um, but with round lemon head faces and stuff like that, and um, and so you know that's what we were trying to do—a compromise that were cl that was closer, and um, and what was great about all that, if anything, was that. Um, John Pan and I, I think Tom didn't even want to draw the old way anyway, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and some of that A and S stuff is really good art that I think some people look back on it because it was very imagined, imaginative, and very detailed. A lot of detailed art in that stuff. Um, um, but and and here's one thing I'm not sure people know why we did A and S was that um, I was also doing um, Pokemon, and Pokemon was such a hit. Um, and we had to pay royalties and all that. And I think Nintendo was getting upset that we were making money, making just cards of their cards. Mm -hmm. That um, the, the president of the company, we, we, we spoke on. And, and, and yeah, God. So, so that's much what we did. Quite hard to get Was to, um, a Pokemon type of general interest. Well, that was the problem with tops. You know, they would, if you are like Matt, they would let you do it because they would do it one or two times. But tops made a lot of money with it. So, you know, they got sued left and right. <laughs> Nobody likes other people making money, you know? <laughs> No, it, you know, it's normal. If I would do something and somebody would copy it and make a million, I would sue him too. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, I got a question. Um, I know John Pound, and I guess you did too, a lot of the originals was kept by Tops and then sold again by um, a Sotheby's sort of auction. And, were, auction. You were, and your artwork was part of that as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. They kept everything. Yeah, they kept my stuff it, too. My rough stuff. Yeah, it was later. Yeah, yeah. No, no. After 
after uh, the lawsuit and no, I don't know, but when Art left because he was thinking they are selling uh, the originals and we didn't get anything, you know, we didn't get a bonus or anything. So uh, uh, Art, he left Tops and uh, but he also insisted that the artists get the artwork back, you know. That was one of I don't know. Yeah, so in, the Tops archive, we got the in the Tops archive, I actually found a book of his notes and his drawings and everything. And I uh -huh. think Ira Friedman, I think he was trying to find a way to get it back to him somehow. But, um, mm -hmm. but yet the company at the time was looking at the archive to look at stuff they can sell. You know, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was horrible. I wanted to be a part mm -hmm. of that. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sort of like, uh, I don't know, if I can't go to, uh, you know, the third one. I'm like, it belongs in the museum, you know. I just kept saying, yeah, it yeah. belongs in the museum, you know, and um, <laughs> and they sold a lot of stuff, you know, um, I thought it was hit. Mm hmm. That's they cool. did, so, yeah, yeah. When the auction was, I remember that. We were all pissed. <laughs> but wow. that was normal then, you know. I mean, you were glad to do, to have a job. So, but I, thanks goodness, I have uh, a lot of sketches and that I still have. And I kept everything. So, because I can't throw out anything. Tom, what's so great about the archive? I got you get to see a lot of the stuff that never made, you know. And was like, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I know there was a few of yours. I think there was one with like um, nursery or something like that. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get uh, one was the nursery rhymes. It was almost done. But Tops didn't know how to sell it, you know. Right. Because it, but it's funny. It's funny as hell. It was a very, very good. And yeah. I mean, it was ready to be printed. Uh, maybe I should make, I have everything here. So. Oh, wow. Maybe I should make uh, copies. I'll and, chime in and say, and yes, book. you should make copies and you should sign them. And I'll bet you everybody in this chat would blow yeah. it up right now because everybody wants them. Yeah, it's they're, they're, they're not garbage pay kits. They're more in the style of uh, fairy tale books, you know. Okay. Not a word, it's right. It's funny. done beautifully. It's like a Disney esque type. Of, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> a funny Disney type of thing, but it, it's also like um, violent, you know. It's, it's, really, it's yeah, great yeah. with tops, you know. They always try to like yeah. we're doing educational, but it's yeah. violent, you know. So I don't know, but it, it's funny. I think that Mark Mark was into that into. Violent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm at the illustrations are kind of like sweet. I made him sweet, but you know, with guts and, and everything. It's like Goldilocks else. and the three bears, and they're like eating Goldilocks alive or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah. And it's like a rhyme or something. Yeah. Well, I could make I could make books. I would have to make copies, and I don't know. I should maybe. And I got. I, have it. Uh -huh. I got another question though. I got when you're ready. Um, about candy. I know you did some candy artwork, like box stuff. I yeah, did a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of different uh, projects for tops. You know, as I said, I, I was like the house artist. Uh, whenever they needed something, you know, I would have to do it. And uh, it was like you and, Jay Lynch, right? you, you and Jay Lynch were like the house artists there. Like he yeah. would do gags, yeah, he would do yeah, gags, yeah. paintings and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. We were like all the time used, you know, forward. And there was a lot. I mean, I did whole series of candy stuff and all kind of, yeah, to the toys. What was that? Cheap toys. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. There were many. Did they do that Beanie Babies spin-off thing, but they did a candy kind of thing of it or something like that with bears or something? Yeah. Did well, what I did, 
See, be before I did the garbage beer kits, I did a whole series of uh, gross beers. I don't know right. if you know it. And they were that an insert. Was, Didn't they put some of those as an insert in one of the, the sets later? Didn't they have a couple of them that they used? Yeah, but they were actually uh, buttons that you would carry with this, you know, you could put on. And uh, they were not stickers, so they were like round. And they were, yeah, I did a whole series with a box and with, uh, and that was next to the garbage bill kits. So I don't know. There are so many things. Tom, I just I thought of something that's before. really funny. I, it was like a private joke between you and me. Remember the spaghetti um, troll one that you did of the spaghetti? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I said, wow, I said, I did that same gag without knowing it subliminally that, of that it came. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we started like seeing if we could do the same spaghetti gag differently in each GPK thing, like each series. Yeah. We kept doing like, let's do a spaghetti head, you know, and it was called mm -hmm. the spaghetti. And we kept trying to do it different ways, just yeah. Different funny <laughs> yeah but we did spaghetti i think in the garbage bill kits in the original series there was one too with spaghetti on a head well you know that's what happens if you i mean how can you make thousands of uh, ideas and they would you know very often would be the same like it was done already I don't even know what was done. I, when I do start to work, I or to come up with things, I don't really didn't know everything. Yeah. yeah, I got a very deep question, and I'm glad that I thought of it now because I think it keeps me up at night sometimes. I, oh you know, God. um, how do you pick what's in garbage in your drawings? Because it's hilarious. Like, you'll have like a dead cat, you know, um, you know, fish bones a can, you know, a shoe with the nail in it. But sometimes you come up with some stuff that I'm like, wow, that's gross, but I never thought of, you know. And you do the uh -huh. same thing, you do the same thing with throw up. You know, you really know what to put in vomit. Because <laughs> I run out of three items, like, oh, okay, and I bought this. You got yeah. like, you got a, like a dozen um, yeah, yeah. that you could put in there. Yeah. And I find that amazing. I don't know, ask my head. It's all in my head. <laughs> you know, it's that's why I always have too much stuff. You know, I, I can't keep myself from putting more and more stuff on the, on the picture, like what I'm doing now. Again, I have to control myself and take it out, take it out. <clears throat> when, when you were growing yeah. up as a kid. And going out in the streets, did you see like garbage cans and sewers and stuff like that that just oh, had no. really cool I grew up in paradise <laughs> type of thing? Or yeah, yeah, no, I threw up. I threw up. I grew up in a, a, you know in Croatia next to the sea. It's like Puerto Rico. Wonderful weather. You go every day swimming. You, you know, I grew up. That explains the fish like bones. Really paradise. Huh? <laughs> that explains the fish bones. You know, I always see you with the yeah, fish, bones. The fish bones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I grew up really very happy. So it's not that I'm, you know, I do have a little aggressive streak in my drawings and stuff. You know, I don't know. Where it comes from, and you're also <laughs> and you're also science and sort of like um, instruction of science through art in a in a sort of um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's a, it's sort of a mad magazine type of way, but in a very intelligent way. You know, I don't know. It's yeah, funny. Yeah. You mean the, you mean the quantums that I made? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah, and, and you know, and remember we're in the museum? I, I met up with you in the museum when you had it in the... You're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there are things that are... They are all related to science. But in a funny way, you know. But it was not like garbage pail or mad. 
And I did a lot of this, uh, yeah, science things. For I did also school books, believe it or not, with very nice drawings and uh, whatever was funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did a lot of different things. You know, I so started are you like at, bi you know, huh? biology and anatomy because I've seen you do some GPKs where they're cut in half. And it's almost like almost an, an uh, anatomy book type of layering yeah. that kind of detailed, kind of thought out, well thought out type yeah. of thing. Growth. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I look a lot on uh, references. You know, I have a lot of books uh, about anatomy and stuff. But also when I do anything, when I do a ship, when I do an airplane, when I do a coffee pot, I always go to my, I have a picture library, right. so now I use Google, but then I <laughs> have a picture library, and then I would always, uh, I would use a lot of uh, catalogs and all kind of stuff. I know. Every, because, you know if every you know how things look like, they give you ideas, you know, how, what to do. I and that's why... At like the reference library, every art the old like the old artists used to have, and yeah, you know, you're you're always taught to take clippings, take clippings, and cut things out and and put it in a book. You know, women, you know, looking up, you know, um, women yeah, on bicycles or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. And um, and what's weird is sometimes you look for reference now on Safari or whatever. <laughs> But I don't think it's the same kind of reference you would get from a clipping, you know, and yeah, from yeah. back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a lot of like geographic magazines here. I mean, I had them all starting with, you know, I don't know, 19, 1910 or so. But wow. I threw them out because I couldn't. It's just too, it takes so much room. And I go now to Google and they really have very, very good, very good references. And sometimes, especially when I did the science stuff, you know, it was very helpful. But now too, I just go to my computer and instead of going to my library, because it's too much, I have to look like one hour just to find this one picture or that. And I get it like two minutes now, in Google. Yeah. You get reference now, you're like close enough. All right, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, you know, reference, I've, it's very helpful because, as I said, they give you ideas also, you know, while you are looking at it. And, mm. and I was always interested in, you know, to give it a humoristic bent, you know, something funny about it. Tom, something, of, you know. Tom, did you see some Chris Meeks ever? No. No, oh, he's my good friend and my drawing partner on the book. Um, he's a fantastic um, um, illustrator, you name it, painter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. um, so, good. Yeah. so I've got to jump in real quick. Chris is messaging me. He's having <laughs> issue. he's having issue with his audio. Um, he can't hear us. So we can hear him. That's where the feedback's coming from. I'm gonna mute him real quick. So he's trying to figure out his audio so that he can hear us. Um, right now, he can't. <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna, he's holding up pictures now. Hold on here. Oh, oh dear. My audio is, Chris, oh, he can't hear me. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to message him. I'm wondering. Well, let him know saying good things. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, well. Uh... Yeah, I do. <laughs> We can hear him. That's what's funny about this is we can hear him. So so while I'm chatting with Chris real quick, I'm going to bring over here Bobby B because I do want to talk to Bobby for a minute too. Bobby, how did you get in with Garbage Pail Kids? You are our over-the-seas connection. Um, you do some amazing artwork. I mean, I've got some cards up here that you've done for me. Um, you've done some comic book covers for me. You work in a lot of different mediums, not just you know the pen and ink kind of thing. I, I know you do clay and sculpting and whatnot. So how did you get into this family? And tell us a little bit about your story, how you came here. So, um, I mean, it's 
it's a bit of a weird one to be honest. I I grew up drawing. Um, my dad would take me and my brother out drawing, usually to churches, um, canals, and we'd sit and draw anything that was in front of us really. But it never floated my boat. So as they'd be sitting there drawing, you know, life, I'd sit there drawing them drawing life, and um, I can remember from a young age seeing work from Tom Bunk. Um, and I think that kind of inspired me to, to draw some of the more weird and wonderful things. And it weren't till um, quite later on that I realised Garbage Pail Kids had started back up. I, I can't fully remember collecting them as a child because I was so young, but my brother definitely did. And I can remember sticking some of his stickers, whether or not I actually bought any at the time, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. But um, it's... It's been a prevalent, a, a prevailed thing throughout my life. I grew up watching the movie, and I I loved it. I know it, it gets a bad rap, but um, I'd watch it all the time, and I'd introduce friends to it all the time. And um, it's just been constant. It's been a constant in my life, really. So when I realised Garbage Pail Kids had come back, um, I jumped straight on it. I didn't realise there was Facebook groups for it or anything. So once I realised, I'd join them, and then. I saw there was a convention called Geek Stravaganza in Rotterdam and Tom Bunk was going to it. Wow. So I hopped on a plane, flew over there by myself and um, had the honour of cool. meeting Tom and uh, Vincenzo, who goes by uh, Shen Shed Shenders, I think he's, Shenders. You'd, yes. you'd pronounce yeah. it. Tom, and, um, and then I went several times. Do you remember meeting Bobby Tom by chance? I don't remember. I imagine you've met so many. I had a big spot on my face. <laughs> you're going to remember me. I gave you a small Eerie Eric um, cheap toy or a minikin. When uh -huh. I saw you. Whether you'd remember yeah, that. So many. Yeah, it was a nice time. But I don't remember you exactly. So where did you come from? Uh, UK. Oh, UK. Oh, yeah. Maybe so I you... remember. I don't. I, I have to look at my pictures. My brain is not so good. <laughs> how did you get to Tops, Bobby? How did that? How did that process go about that you got hired by Tops as a sketch artist? Um. So when I was at Geek Stravaganza, I was, you know, asking loads of questions, especially to Vincenzo or Chenders, um, because yeah. he's a great guy, great down to earth guy. Just sit and talk for hours with him, um, and. Initially, I didn't realise sketch cards were a thing. I think it was Steve Potter's sketch cards. I saw his old videos on YouTube where he'd flick through all the ones he'd done before he'd send them in. Um, and that was what kind of turned me on to doing sketch cards. And then when I was talking to Vincenzo, um, he was kind of letting me know that they, you know, they do take people on board. So I managed to get hold of an email and I just started drawing pictures I was doing mainly acrylic pictures for the most part, painting. And I'd just, every week I'd send them a bunch of pictures, just, you know, letting them know that I'm, I'd love to do it if ever an opportunity arisen. And I, I think I sent a total of three emails and I think it was just down to look and timing that, that they wanted some, you know, new, new sketch artists on board. So I got that like invite for food fight. And it, it all kind of started there, really. Um, and I've loved it ever since. I mean, I've I've always been um, kind of artistic with clay. And it, I just like to get stuck into stuff and learn new things. So um, so not only draw and I'll sculpt and I'll try, I'll just try anything, to be honest. You know, I'll, I'll play with all sorts just to try and get something from head to hand. But... Um, that's generally how I got into into tops, just sending a, several emails, and eventually I heard back. Just really lucky, I think. So, so Bobby, who is? We got a question in the chat here, and I'm going to ask all the artists this: like, who is your favorite garbage pill kid, and who is your favorite to draw? <sighs> my favorite, for the most part, is probably Boney Tony. Um, my favorite to draw. It changes all the time. Same with my favourite Garbage Pail Kid, to be honest. It's almost like 
I like drawing Boney Tony because the way I do it, I do it very fluidly. So it, it almost never comes out the same exactly because I I don't tend to draw with a pencil when I do them. I tend to just colour the skin tones and then once it's all there, I'll give it a, a bit of an outline. So it doesn't always come out the same. Um, so he's kind of my organic character that I just like to play with. I think I've drew him so many times. But um, as to favourite to draw... A lot like um, Smoking Joe's answer when he was at the convention, it's almost like when I draw a new character or when I sculpt a character, I, I try to pay so much attention to it. I find new respects for them. Like it's almost like every time I'll draw someone new or someone, sometimes they, you know, they look difficult to do or you just think, oh, I don't think I'll try that one. But um, yeah, almost every time I'll kind of think this, you know, I love this one. I love this one especially if the sketch comes out great or something it's um it's always kind of changes your perspective on on particular characters but um adam Baum is another one it's always you know he's, he goes down well and he's a fun one to draw you know you can kind of change more about facial expressions i find with with adam Baum more than anyone and have it make a bit of an impact on the the character so to speak but um yeah i'm very kind of open to to change when it comes to my favorite ones to draw but phony tony is generally my go-to my go-to guy all right all right so listen i'm gonna ask mr tom bunk the same question who is your favorite character whether it's yours or another artist and who's your favorite to draw as far as the garbage pill kids line oh i don't really have a favorite there's so many <clears throat> i some i am a little bit closer to because especially the ones in the beginning because it was so much more exciting you know the to make them and i remember more how they how i created them but uh, after a while you know you know things it's it's not so it's it's nice but it's not so exciting so that's why my favorite would be really the one, the first ones I did. You know, I don't even know the names, but one is Hippie Skippy and yeah, I don't know. There's so many. I mean, have a nice day. Okay. I've, got, I've got a question from the panel for you, Mr. Bunk. Do you happen to have the have a nice Dave, any of the have a nice Dave concept artwork still or rough artwork? The one with the smiley face where he's holding the yeah, smiley yeah, face. No, I know, I know. I have to look. I don't oh, know. I'll buy it from you if you do. Yeah, Mr. Dave Moger, that's his character, our, our co-host here. That's his guy, and he's dying to get that original from you if you happen to have it around. Or whoever has it. <laughs> what, what was it again? I mean, what series? Do you oh, remember? seven. Oh, seven. Okay, I will look. Man, that would be incredible. You would make Dave's entire life if you had that. <laughs> I'll buy it off you. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. All right, so I'm going to throw this one over to Jeff. Jeff, favorite character, <laughs> favorite to draw? Um, we were talking about that before, you know, I really don't have a favorite like Tom as far as, um, um, or maybe I do, I, you know, I always, you know, I love, um, the power, you know, the, you know, I call them like the power trio of Adam bomb, um, dead, dead and, um, nasty Nick, you know, um, and I kind of relate to all three of them. And they're sort of like, I call them the heart, the brain and the body They're They have a Trinity. And it, there's sort of like a Star Trek thing of Captain Kirk and uh, Spock and McCoy type of thing. And um, you put them together, it's there. I, I, um, you get sort of um, a garbage bell kid, um, a roundabout of the types of characters you can relate to. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I guess maybe um, Nasty Nick might stick out because I, you know, I could always draw him. I've got a personal <laughs> favor to ask of you, Jeff. Will you tell the story behind Dead Ted? The way you draw my wife, when we met you in Philly, well, when we talked to you in Philly, um, you told my wife the story of Dead Ted and why he always looks sad when you draw him. And my wife is obsessed with every Dead Ted you draw now, my wife wants to own. She she collects Beth Death. She collects Tom's Beth Death. However, every time she sees a bony Tony that's got your name on it, she's like, I'll be damned. It is true. And she loves the story. So would you would you tell that story to everybody quick? Because I thought that was amazing. 
of why he or um, you know, which story you'd want to talk about of like because there's a drawing story and there's the background um, origin story that never you know, but it's pretty much um, a person trapped in a body that's dead and they could talk, but nobody can, um, but you know nobody can understand them, and um, which is what I think a lot of people attracted to GPKs. Or the same thing, like, you know, maybe people felt like a misfit or of some sort, felt like they were misunderstood or an outcast. And uh, and that's what's great about, I guess, why I like about Dead Ted. And um, I always thought of him as a normal kid or not a normal kid, but a GPK trapped in a, a body where he can't really express himself as, as, as he thinks. He's actually really intelligent and he's really sad. So he's always sad because he's actually beckoning to be understood you know please don't be afraid of me come you know and um and he's trying to and if you look at the gpk um comics i'm doing um and i told chris i said the whole thing like we got to make him look sad even when he's happy you know <laughs> and because i i just think that's and the other thing is um and the drawing secret is that he's michael j fox and i kind of make him look like he's sad saying doc doc you know and he's um, beckoning, doing this type of, you know, Michael J. Fox just has that sad puppy type of look or whatever. And with the hair, I don't know, for some reason. So that's my um, Dead Ted um, formation of what I think of him inside and out. I love that story. My wife is obsessed with that story. You know, Lindsay loves you besides, but she loves that story. And now she owns like a few different Zapata dead Ted's because when we see him, she's like, you got to get that for me because I want that. I want all of his dead Ted's now because she it reminds her of Xander because our son Xander with the autism spectrum is very much the same way. He doesn't express himself so well. You know what I mean? So she sees a lot of your Ted's that look just like Xander in her eyes, which is funny. So real quickly here, I want to, I want to, Chris, can you hear us now? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Hey, all right. We got hey Chris. Hey guys, I'm back. All right. So I'm new to is, phones. I to, I've told people this and they don't believe me. I was like, when Chris was in Philly, he had his first yeah, yeah. cell phone. Like he is not the most technologically advanced dude out there, you know? Oh yeah. This is the same phone. And I gave it to my wife. Right when I got back, so still no phone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why people ask me all the time, like, how do I get a hold of Chris? Like, I want to do a commission. I'm like, listen, you gotta you gotta hit up Sandy or or get real lucky. Uh -huh. Chris might be checking his stuff today because he's not online a lot. So yeah. we're happy to have you here. Um, could you tell us a little bit of your background, how you became into GPK, you know, how you got into the family and, and how that worked out for you, please? Oh, well, you know, originally, you know, it's from the eighties. I think uh, Mars Attacks. I first liked Mars Attacks because it was so gross. And then, uh, yeah, I found uh, the Wacky Packs and then found the Garage Book Kids. And then when I got into doing sketch cards, I was doing Star Wars. And it took me about a year and a half just to get onto the Garage Book Kids. So who's your who's your favorite Garbage Book Kids character and who's your favorite to draw? Oh, gosh. Someone that's really busy, like... Uh, See, I like doing Dead Ted <laughs> and uh, semicolon. I really love doing semicolon. Any excuse to do semicolon. Really? That's an awesome. Yeah. Because this half face is so detailed. I love doing that. So, did you collect as a child? You're you're the same age as all of us. Like, were you in as a kid? You know, in the OS series and all that. Same kind of. I had more of the wacky packs. You know, my parents wouldn't let me have Garchville kids, <laughs> so I just had to watch all the other kids collect theirs. So now I'm old enough, I can have them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a wacky pack guy too, at for you know, in the seventies, you know. Uh -huh. Get my dad's paper, you know, the change. Get some wacky packs, you know, and that was like my probably my first love affair to Topps cards, of you know, besides the. Oh paper. yeah. So so now you and Jeff are working on the comics together, right? You, uh -huh. guys, you guys are doing the Origins comics. I know you guys are always constantly busy with those. How's that going? You loving doing that? I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Funny. I mean, it's, it's it's a huge... It's a nice break from doing all the Garchville Get stuff because his layouts are so nice. And, you know, I just have to put a little link on them and they're already done. It's so cool looking. You got some around you can show off? 
Can we show some? Know, uh, is that okay? I got the old ones. I don't know. Can I show the new ones, Jeff? Or give me hold on no, to no. that. You know what? You got the first page on you. I'll show the before, and you can show the after. On yes. That oh, from the second series. Yeah. 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 Hold on. Let me see if I can grab that real quick. Right, I'm going to put Jeff up to see the original. So here is. Sure. Here is the original layout that Jeff does. Exclusive. I'll have to drop this video and take it down yeah, afterwards. Exclusive, guys. This is the first page of the first issue. And uh, you better hold on to your seats because there's a lot to look. Bring it to There you go. There you go. Whoa. Hold on. Here's the New York. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, man. <laughs> Nick York, that's so cool. Epic. Wow, that's amazing. So so I'm lucky enough. I, I got the uh lot got, of, what's great, there's a lot of GPAs to look for. Yeah, it, there I am, right there. And it kind of shows you what this whole series is about. Uh GPAs um on a chase in New York and Manhattan in 1986. That's all I'm gonna say. I love that. So that's the before. You got to see the beautiful app. Hold on. I'm going to bring Chris in right now. Chris, you got right. that page? Yeah, there it is. How's that look? Uh, see it. Put it closer. Uh, yeah. Right there, there buddy. Go. That's perfect. Bring it up just a touch. Yeah, right Jeff, there. Like right there. I'm like five seconds off. Oh, Whoop, you're there good. Perfect. Hey, and you know, we also got Chris to do a cover for the first issue. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, this one only took four days to do. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. So, so let's talk about this. So Jeff does the original layouts and then uh, sends you a, a digital copy of that layout, or does he send you the originals and you ink up a new, or do you ink you don't ink over his stuff, right? You make a whole new ink off of what he sends you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sends me a, a scan of his image, and then I photocopy it out, and then I draw over that. And then you do the inks, and then they're sent uh, off to, I think, Dustin's doing the colors on this one. Is Dustin doing right? all the colors on these ones, yeah. or does it... And then he does the colors with Photoshop, correct? I think yeah. so. so. So the final artworks are actually your inks. There is no final color physical artwork. Is that correct? That's right. That's that's how I thought that went down, and and that's that's really a neat story that I don't think a lot of the the viewers were aware of right there. That's the that's process cool. of regular comic books, um, um, pencil, inker, color it. Right, but but, I, um, but what it is, we since we're doing on a low budget, and we're just doing this sort of for fun. Him, uh, a lot of people are on board on this. Is um, we don't have time to go to a FedEx. And stuff like that for you know, did someone to get um red money to you know to send um um original pencils? So you scan the pencils in the exact size they're supposed to draw on it, and um, and that's what we do. We light box over the pencils mm -hmm. and or um, whatever, whatever you're doing, but um, otherwise, you're spending a lot on shipping and um, losing art and stuff like that, but you know, but if. We had a budget. Uh, you know, it would have been nice to send original art. You know. So, so Jeff, while I got you on the main screen, what is your what's your fondest memory of your experience with Garbage Pail Kids? Like, what's the one thing that you know just makes you smile? Be it a story, be it an experience, be it a project. Like, what's the one I thing? Think, that... I think it's about meeting and working and learning from people like Tom Bunk and and Jay Lynch and uh, John Pound and Art Spiegelman. And um, Mark Newgarden and um, Ira Friedman and a lot of other timers that you guys wouldn't know these people, but you know, but behind the scenes. And um, being part of that is um, and learning from those people. So to me, it's sort of being like on a um, some sort of being in the right place in the right time and meeting. Um, once in a lifetime group of people and get to know them and their beliefs. And, and it sticks to me, you know, I kind of feel like, um, I got to see something that, uh, a sort of work integrity and work ethic and, um, art style that, uh, 
that's going to fade away, you know. And um, and it was great to be able to um, meet the people that started this. And um, they were so nice to me in bringing me into the industry and making sure I came out okay, that I try to do the same with everybody I meet, you know. And um, so I think that's my fondest memory. That's awesome. That's, you know, and that's a lot. And I say it all the time. Our community of Garbage Field Kids, I mean, it goes beyond just the fans. Like, even the artists. There is a tight-knit, almost a family that we've built, and, and that's great. Um, oh, so can I, I one more thing, actually? One, uh, at the end or something? Yeah, you can do whatever you want right now, Jeff. No, um, just here, before we go, since we're on the topic of the comic, and I want to, um, even though I had more on the show, but I think I wanted to show this. And uh, here's the cover. Oh. That's awesome. Oh, oh my God. Chris, you did that? No, 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 Jeff did that. Jeff did that? Yeah, this is my cover. Yeah. We, we oh all, my God. Got at it. Yeah. It's very cool. That's amazing. That's amazing, Jeff. Is that for the first issue or the second issue? This is the first issue, right? There. Yeah, the first issue. Because yeah. there's always multiple covers, right? Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have another color. Tom has one. So all, Tom all has one? Hold so, on. So yeah, and here's Tom's. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh jeez. Awesome. All right, let me go get mine really quick. Oh my oh. god. Chris just said he's going to get his. Yeah. Mine's not as good. Oh my god. This yeah. is amazing, you guys. This is amazing. Yeah. Nice. Right. Oh, cool. <laughs> So, so Tom, while I've got you on screen, while I've got you here, what's your fondest memory of your of your time with Garbage Pail Kids? Do you have an experience or a project or a memory that that kind of pops you? And there was another question we were asked if we're gonna get another giant bunk puzzle by chance on the on any of the card backs coming up. Yeah, there are still two, I think. One is uh, science fiction, and the other one is uh, playground. I don't, I will have to look. That's I could awesome. show it to you, but yeah. But uh, I think there are maybe even three. No, there are two, I think. Was, awesome. was there yeah, meant to be a, a giant puzzle on the back of the short print cards for um, Vacation? Yeah. That come yeah, out the blank? Vacation, I made, I made one, right? I mean, it's already out <laughs> for Vacation. <laughs> Yeah, but there's one really nice, it's uh, science fiction, uh, nice poster, and then the other one is the playground, and uh, this is really what I have a lot of fun, it's actually more fun than just doing individual garbage pail kits, it's fun to make this puzzle. Your France, the giant France one you did was amazing. Like the, the Eiffel Tower one that you just did not long ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I I made a lot for uh, Matt. I don't know. I just got into it and then they would give me this kind of jobs. So I had really a lot of luck to be able to do it. You know? I wouldn't do it just by myself. That's but hard. if they, you know... It's yeah, well, that's a good thing when you get older, you know, you get better jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick, I want to pull Chris back. Chris, show us your comic cover, bro. Oh, it's not as impressive because, yeah, we did have it digitally. Sandy did like the background coloring. Uh, this is from Jeff's layout. Oh, and then that's you can't cool. really see the swirl, but on awesome. the cover, it's going to be like neon 80s colors. And we did that digitally in Photoshop and then. Uh, Sandy added some of the Garchwood Kid cards that are swirling around. Anyway, you'll see it when the issue comes out. Can you see that all right? Yeah, we can awesome. see it. Awesome. It's incredible. Yeah, that was Jeff's layout. Wow. So, so Chris, what's what's your favorite thing to be doing with G? Do you have a fondest memory of, of what you've done so far as far as GPK? Like, what's what's something that makes you smile, you know? I don't know. I kind of like the, the Last of Us card I did. That one was really nice. And then the uh, the one I did the the triple panel of the first series, all the characters, mm -hmm. that would take about a week to do, but that was fun. Man, the artwork pages are amazing. You guys are doing Jeff. I'll tell you, and Chris also. You guys are doing an amazing job with this comic. Like the, ah, the thanks, artwork, man. 
is incredible. The story's great. I mean, it's really a great comic. And I think a lot of the community has been reading it and picking up copies and the variant copies make it fun. I mean, uh -huh. we've got a series in the comics, you know, so us OCD collectors got to have them all, man. Right. <laughs> uh, this series, I got to say, um, Chris and I, I, I think are at our best and we got a rhythm and I can't um, express how much I love working with Chris and how much what it is, everybody is sort of um, ironing, sharpening iron, where we kind of want the next person to like what they see so they can try to put something else on top of it as well. And, um, and it's cool. And it just becomes a, this, this last series, the product that's coming out, I think Chris will agree, is just heads to toe better than the first. But also the story is too, but the story is not like, like it's a different series. It's just progressed from the first one. We just had a lot of story to tell. And I got to say, Adam and Hans, um, the story, uh, if, if you didn't buy the first one, you're going to love this one. The minute you read the first page, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to put it down. That's for sure. I think so. Chris, what do you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. And all, all the detail and all the pages. I mean, every time I get a new page, there's tons of stuff on there I got to draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we yeah, love seeing that. Yeah, it's a killer. Um, as far as I'm kind of glad when we got into the sewer, man. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't the sewer better than being in the streets? Or we're I don't know. All those bricks take just as long, man. <laughs> there's, like all this, there's all those brick, brickwork in the sewers. Oh, I got to draw those bricks. <laughs> So we've got a question in the chat I'd like to get to because it's a good question. And this one was aimed for Mr. Bunk. And it was looking back at your amazing career. Is there a job or project that you had to turn down or wish you could have done or been part of, but were unable for whatever reason, be it time conflicting schedules or just life? What was your white whale job that got away? Uh, I don't really know any of that. Now he got garbage. But I could, in general, say that the jobs I would have offers for jobs that for a lot of money, and I usually <clears throat> would reject them because the they were just no fun. Because the people they had too much uh, power to tell you, you know, you do this, you do that. So all my jobs that I had. They were all, the, I had a lot of freedom, and that was really the most important thing. And not so much the money. I, I did jobs, or I do jobs for very little. But, you know, if they are fun, that's what I do. Yeah. That's what my, you know, second check is is the happiness <laughs> that's an amazing answer. that is such a perfect answer Tom. because i hope you know how happy your artwork makes us i mean we but it comes out yeah yeah what, what you've put together over the years and i'm a slasher asher fanatic as you know i, I you've mm -hmm. done it you got a slasher for me right over here and, and <laughs> your artwork is it's it's a different kind of artwork the original series my wife collects mm -hmm. beth death so we're we both actually pc one of your characters which is pretty funny yeah, um, yeah. and and you you've touched a lot of a lot of lives and, and made a lot of people happy with what you put out and it's great to know mm -hmm. that it's not all about the money it's a, it's about you know what you have the freedom to do and, and express yourself yeah i mean that's what the most important thing is you know and i would advise everybody you know it's if it makes you happy the viewer he will you know get it you know the energy that you put in and uh, very important for me yeah there are all kind of the different you know ways to approach this uh, <clears throat> when i came to new york i had no idea what i would do i didn't know anybody and so little by little i got into it and uh, that was perfect you know there was uh, i was never super famous that i you know <clears throat> would have you know i just was myself always you know. i think that's good important you know Life is short. 
So I got another question here from the group. Um, this is Adam, the Garbage Shoot Droids creator. He says, um, are there any GPK designs or spoofs that you wanted to do that weren't allowed over the years? The tops just said, nope, we can't do that. Like, do you remember any off the top of your head where you were like, that would have been a great card? I want to hear from Jeff and Chris on this too. And and Bobby, if you've got an idea, this is this is a great question. Well, one I remember was the, the garbage bill kits with the finger. Uh, and they didn't print it, but I thought that was a perfect garbage bill kit. I don't know if you know it. I don't have it here right now. I just saw the documentary, Tom, and that was in there. That one is awesome. Mm -hmm. He's got the punk rock hair on the front. And yeah. that thing <laughs> oh, is awesome. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, that is an awesome card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they didn't print it. Then there were some other ones, but it's okay. I mean, one was a suicide card. They didn't want to print it. I could understand it. Did you do the but, wheelchair one? Um, huh? The wheelchair, the kid going in the wheelchair in the swimming pool? Oh, this I didn't do. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did it? No. Then Pound, he did with uh, Lincoln with the hat. I don't know if you remember. That was the yeah, series. series lost. Yeah, very old one. They didn't print. There were some that didn't do. But many, I, I they, they did reprint them again. You know, I don't know what series, but so well, it's all right. I mean, do you have any of those originals still, or the roughs for any of those? I have roughs. Yeah, I think the one with the finger I've sold. Yeah, but, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that was one. I I thought it was. Good because it was so hundred percent garbage bill kits, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I have to say altogether I was very lucky. So uh, that's awesome. Well, how about you, yeah. Jeff? Have you ever had a concept or an idea for a card that you you know you wanted to see or, or you know heard of a concept that you wanted to see and they were like no nope, we can't do it we're not going to allow it. Um, I remember a lot of the ones that were sort of based on celebrities that we could have never reprint or it gave us trouble or um, ones that I wanted to do like you know I like I wanted to do a lot of Marvel superhero type of stuff and the only one I got to do was Spider Man at first. You know, Spider-Man. And what it was, they were just scared of being sued um, by one of the movie companies that owned the rights to these characters um, at the time. And so when we did do them, I think the second one that we did that was a super was Wolverine. But um, as far as, uh, and then as far as um, celebrities, Christina Aguilera, I think that hurt her feelings or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome card, man. Yeah, that was, I know it's right. It was one of the first celebrity cards that actually, besides like the the you know Woody Allen from back in the day, or the yeah the Hollywood and the Crystal Gale, like right. Christina Aguilera was like the first celebrity that you guys did since the OS, you know. And what I liked a lot, little girls liked that card for some reason because we did it as a promo, and we I think we handed it out in San Diego. Yep. And I remember hearing all these little girls talking about it, saying that, you know, we would hear stuff from, um, uh, I forgot which one it was, um, somebody just had sort of their ear to the rail of some kind of kids thing. But they were saying that it became popular with kid, like girls in, in school, and it, because they weren't being forced to look like a pop star. They were making fun of it, you know, and it just sort of gave a, I guess, girls who felt pressured Christina Aguilera, something to laugh at. So, you know, that one kind of comes to mind, even though it became a restricted card. And um, also was, um, uh, you know, and the one like, you know, and I always remember the, you know, the wheelchair one, because it always floated around in the archive room, you know, the wheelchair going over um, swimming pool, mm -hmm. um, diving board. We all know what we're talking about here, right? And um, yeah, I just saw it. And I don't know if they eventually printed that one, but there was a lot of wackies that were rejected and some GPKs back there I've always tried, including the shot in the head one. And, um, um, and these, you know, but 
we would just try to every series just try to put it back in the in the roundup again of gags to see can we put it in no okay can we do this yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> do it and hopefully you know tire them out or something but um you know uh and here's another one as far as wacky packs was uh broke back mountain dew <laughs> <laughs> And Jay Lynch, and I, and as a joke, as like nobody, you know, it was just, it just made us laugh. And we started making fun of it. And we said, we could, you know, I remember we were just, um, I think we came up with it when he was visiting the weekend or something to see art. And then um, I said, let's do it. And he brought in the gag. But to me, it was going to be a joke for the gag meetings, you know? So I'd be showing my thing, and then I'm like, look, bro, back, you know, and then we all laugh. Of course, we can't do that. Let's move on. And they're like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. And I'm like, what? and I didn't, I don't think I told them it was a joke. But that's, you know, that one comes to mind. So there you go. That's awesome. All right. So, so Chris, I know that you had a lot of cards that came out in some of the online sets and whatnot. Did, did you pitch any concepts, or was there anything you really wanted to see done that they were like, you know, sorry, bro, we're not going to let you do that, you know? No, usually they just uh, Neil Cameron would do all the layouts for me. I didn't do a lot of designs except for like the uh, the Crash Gordon. You know, they considered doing another set of that, and I did some, but that didn't end up doing anything. Uh, I designed a bunch of wacky packs, like instead of Pringles, I called them Shingles, and they didn't like that one. And uh, Gorio instead of Oreo, that one didn't pass. So usually Neil Cameron does everything for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm just scrolling through the the chat here. Um, we got one over here for Tom Bunk. I'm gonna pull you back up. Um, do you have a story about the original Fred Thread art that you did that Tops had repainted for the final? Which one is that? It's the one with the kid sitting and he's sewed up up the front. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Well, they at some point they asked me if I have some concepts from the that they didn't print before, and that was one of that. Uh, there were some. Uh, I don't know, they didn't use it in the or, you know, original series. They, but they, they, they printed, like, I don't know, like the spider, like the, I don't know, porcupine, this card. There were like four or five they reprinted later. But uh, yeah, so I've got. I also, one. Did work, uh, I also worked for the wacky packs in the eighties. <coughs> oh no, later too in the nineties too. Did mm -hmm. a lot of stuff also. So yeah, I've, I was pretty involved. Yeah, I've got a question for you, Mister Bunk. Is I actually collect your Allen and Ginter cards. You're one of the very few. Non baseball <laughs> players that has a baseball card in the Allen and Ginter set, and I have the parallels. I mean, I, I, I'm buying all of them, I, I love them. How did that come about? Like, what was your reaction when they're like, Hey, we're doing a baseball card series, and we're, we're gonna put a Tom Bunk card in there? Like, was that anything out of the ordinary for you, or were you just like, Hey, cool, let's do it? I have no idea, I don't know why, I didn't even know what they are. The cards. <laughs> what? They just it's that one with your picture on it of your awesome. I didn't, I didn't collect baseball cards or something like that, so I didn't know. And uh, I think Ira Friedman, well, when he wanted me to come back, he, you know, he initiated it. I think I'm not sure. And then I got the cards and very nice, you know, with nice text and. I get a lot of cards to sign, but uh, I I didn't know that there was something big. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the big is this, every so, year. Yeah, is this all baseball baseball players or what? Yeah, Mixed that's with all, pop culture. Yeah, the that's Allen amazing. and Ginter set is ninety percent baseball, and then they throw in some famous icons, pop culture icons, movie stars, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's a funny no story. Yeah. I didn't appreciate it that much. Now I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing them to the sports card side. It's a rabbit hole. Don't go down there. Yeah, right? Jeez <laughs> Louise. 
people like it, they send it to me to sign and so on. I was going to say, that's got to be one of your top cards you sign. What is your top card you sign, you think? I don't know. Uh, there's many. Usually oh, the original, uh, you know, the 80s cards. I bugged you but, one time. I won't do it again, sir. I got what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to look if I have a sketch of... Rough. Take your time, though. Don't rush for me. Yeah, hey, yeah, Tom. Yeah. Tom, what happened to your large paintings that used to be in your studio? Those nice large paintings. What happened? Yeah, no time. <laughs> I, uh, well, I always think to continue, but then I get all these jobs in between. and I was thinking maybe not big canvases but smaller ones yeah i do sometimes small ones but uh, yeah i i like to do some art stuff because it just makes me free you know to play with forms and colors do you still have that bathtub with the folding um drawing table that goes over <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i still have it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to draw on that, you know, in bubbles. Yeah. Try it out. <laughs> Working in the bathtub. <laughs> it's as great as it sounds. So here's a good question for all the artists on the panel. We'll start with you, Mr. Bunk, because you're on the main screen here. What project or, or what have you done that you're most proud of as an artist, be it a, a Mad Magazine spread, a Garbage Pail Kid? Do you have one that you're like, that's my masterpiece in your own eyes? Oh, I don't have one. No, I, uh, no. I mean they're all different. I'm really, you know, very proud of my paintings, but uh, you know, nobody sees it. They are, but that's where I put, you know, everything that comes out of for me. You know, garbage bag kids. They are more like, you know, I don't know. They are not. They're not from me. They're like, you know, I'm using some other form where I can put my jokes in, but it's not mine, you know. Mm -hmm. I get that. That makes yeah. sense. How about you, Jeff? Do you have a project that, that's you, like your, your favorite thing you've worked on, you know, your favorite card you did, you know, any, anything like that? It depends. Talking about art, some of it goes to my comic days because – it was the stuff that I got first printed was in comic book companies that are now legendary, you know, and, and um, some of them are not even here, you know, some of them close, but, um, you know, and I'm kind of proud to have been in that generation and, and, you know, since I had a kind of a lot of lives and then in my top stuff, um, I get doing the star Wars souvenir magazine when it first, you know, star Wars episode one, because that thing was on every newsstand from all over America and my name was on there. And I started getting calls from people who knew me since high school, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I kind of felt that was kind of cool to be that, do that souvenir magazine that you grew up always picking up as a kid on a newsstand and being part of that. And, and um, of course, Garbage Barrel Kids and Wacky Pass Belt, you know, with a tear in my eye, that's always going to be... Um, um, some of my most fondest memories of being at Tops, and you know, for Christ's sakes, I get a notice from a company called Bazooka that gives me money every month. <laughs> Royalties. <laughs> that no, that's actually for um, retirement, and um, oh, and um, but it's just you know notices, but um, it's another thing that should. But anyway, but it's just um, it just shows you like I, I was in the bubblegum business for a while, and and it was just fun. And um, and it's ironic that you get these retirement notices saying bazooka. <laughs> but and but and um, but I'm saying with the other thing you would be surprised was the Hannah Montana sets that I did because I would go into playgrounds after work and see the rappers all over the place, and I knew like we had a hit, you know, and it was selling. So um, so yeah, that you know, those are my benchmarks of. Um, of tops and comic books, you know, because it's hard, it's hard to pick which one, but, you know, and, and the origins, forget about it. And in those covers, some covers for things I've always wanted to see printed. So, um, 
couple of them, you know. So that's it. So, Jeff, what's that above your Donkey Kong machine? Is that an uncut sheet up there? We had somebody see that over in the corner and was just wondering what that is. Yeah, that's um, uh, a limited poster I did that I got permission from Top uh, a while back. Um, of my um, garbage pal kids. Um, yes, I remember that. Yep. Oh, oh awesome. And yeah. I kind of threw them as a series, and I just wanted to see them as a series. Because um, that's actually got me the idea to do the comic and draw them in heroic poses. But um, what's cool that I did these in the pound um, proportions. And for the comic, <laughs> I had to make them a little taller to be more expressive and easier to um, get them into adult situations that... Um, and deal, you know, and being the human form. So it's it's the comic, but Chris and I really struggle with the human, you know, the little feet human people and the big feet GPK people and making sure the, the physics are in the, you know. So that's great. I love working with Chris Meeks and, and and Dustin Graham. That's another to me a big plateau. So, you know, that's I, I just dig working with everybody on this um, set. So that's and I really highly suggest people to please, please help support our efforts in the last few months, um, few months, but um, six months or whatever it's been. Um, and pick up the first issue. We really think that you guys are going to get more than your money's worth of story and art. And you're really going to like if you love Chris Meek's art, you're going to really see it in this because we sort of draw everything to complement each other, you know, um, to make sure you see who we are and really think this comic book is going to show something different for, you know, people, you know, you're going to see what you wish you saw the first time. All right. Good on that. Where, where is it available right now? Is it on tops? It's going to be at whether they haven't announced it. And uh, let me announce it um, right now. The uh, title, um, at least that I know of, um, is called uh, Trashing Through Time. That's what it's yeah, called. I was wondering what the oh, sounds like. I right. call it TTT. You know, like, you know, uh, TTT, Trashing Through through Time. And I think that's an Adam title or Hans title. Um, All right. So, Chris, what has been your favorite thing you've worked on? What's your favorite card you've done? I mean, is it a comic <laughs> series you're doing? Is it, is it something you put out for one of the online sets? What was your favorite experience so far as far as your artwork and what you've done? Well, you know, my, when I met Sandy, we started collecting cards like in 92. So we collect like the first Star Wars Galaxy and like the first Marvel uh, Spider-Man set. So I got to do one of the Star Wars Galaxy set cards, which was really cool. Well, let me on that. So that was like one of the first set I ever collected as a full set of cards. Can That's you do that? awesome. Yes. That's cool, bro. I really love Chris's uh, Marvel movie cards. That's when I first, um, I think, contacted him. And I think I uh, told you about that, right? Wasn't it like your Marvel stuff? And I said, wow, you know. Oh, well, I did a lot of those, uh, the DCU for like uh, the Cryptozoic. We did that DCU set. That's what uh, they wouldn't let us do any of the Marvel celebrities. Are, are you talking about the celebrities or are you talking about like the, the yeah, comic well, they stuff? look like movie, they almost look like you know, a realistic, you know, they weren't the comic book, you know, yeah, yeah, they look movie. Um, they were definitely movie, um, I, interpretations if I remember correctly, but and they, they were beautiful. Your, your cards are beautiful. Well, thanks, man. That's yeah. that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's take forever. <laughs> What's that? And so that's a fact. Your your work is amazing, bro. You oh, are thanks, you are the next generation master. You know we've got the original right. masters online, and you are the next generation master. <laughs> so so let me pop over here real quick to Bobby B. Bobby like B. What, what what's something you've done that you're you know incredibly proud of, incredibly happy about, you know? Um, everything I've done with Garbage Pail Kids, I'm I'm extremely proud of. I feel like it's my my biggest achievement in life generally um what i'm working on at the minute it's a, it's a bit super top secret but um that is i'd say my my biggest achievement so far so long as everything continues in its trajectory and and comes out but um 
I mean, it's it's closely linked to to these guys, which obviously many of you have probably seen. I remember you, when you even make videos of, um, <laughs> or but they kind of they fit inside PSA cases, so it looks like they've been squished. Um, that's kind of on a, a similar vein kind of thing, but it's um it's a bit super super secret um okay. so that's what i'm most proud of i can't really talk about it that's okay we're not trying to get you in trouble dave and i were talking about that that how your artwork transcends like just the paper and pen and ink and, and painting like you do a lot of sculpting and you work with a lot of different mediums so that really brings you into a whole different level from a lot of the artists that just do the the pen and ink or the color sketches and stuff like that. So it's really a lot of fun to see your works. You know, those boxes you were making are amazing. Yeah, I was just going to show mine off. I got an epic one. Somebody made put me on the big screen. Bobby did this one for me. I That's love cool. it. It is so... Boom. That's yeah, I got awesome. the backwards camera. But, oh, these things are just incredible. Nice. I, yeah. I save my bony tone, bony Joni cards in that now. That's where they all go. <laughs> I love okay. that video. So another question from the lobby here is: um, We're probably going to go down the artist list with this one. Was there a project or character you were asked to do and you started like just not liking it at first, and then ended up loving it when it was finished? You know, you brought an idea that you were kind of iffy on and made it into something that you were really proud of and really enjoyed by the time it was done. I don't know. <laughs> oh, some of these, some of these are off the cuff. I, I apologize. You're like trying to ask him who his favorite kid is. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get some of the questions from the, from the community. They're coming up in chat. I like to make sure that everybody has a chance to ask their questions. So I totally understand. You know, if nothing comes to mind, not a problem at all. Um, let's try it. Jeff. Do you have an answer for that one? Anything you disliked at the beginning or you just didn't think was going to fly. And then by the end of it, you were like, this is great. This is coming out exactly, you know, uh, you know um, and I'm, you know, and, you know, I'm going to be completely honest, even though it probably doesn't look good on me was that when I first, well, it's actually, but when I first did sketch cards, I made a rule that only that could draw on sketch cards were, um, people that were already associated with garbage pail kids in a certain sense, you know, and, um, and little by little, I started trickling, um, that, but when it finally opened the floodgates where anybody can do it, um, I thought that it might go off the rails where people are going to start making their own prints and selling stuff and, you know, um, and not respect the rules. Cause the whole thing was real to me was about, they were worried about, fans taking cards and making their own product out of it or something like that. I don't know what, but something around it. So um, when they finally made it open to everyone, I was just curious, like, I wonder how it's going to pan out. And it panned out great. So, um, and it was just great to see how it blew up where it gave anyone a chance to, to express themselves in, some, in, in a, a genre and a hobby they like doing. And it became something sort of folk art that um, a historic moment of folk art, almost. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Almost like, you know, those when people collect quilts that were made at a certain um, era, you know what I mean? People mm -hmm. will collect these, like those quilts of a certain era, because it's folksy. It's people taking something and making something out of it and expressing their lifestyle, sort of, through that art. To me, that's folk art. I don't know. Love it. That's a great answer. So, um, yeah, do you guys got some artwork? All, all the artists that are on, you guys got some artwork that we can see? Just pull out anything, anything you got. I'll start throwing you on the big screen one by one. We would love to see. Tom, if you've got anything non-GPK related that you could show, it doesn't have to be Garbage Pail Kids. We well, would just love to see some artwork from all you guys. And you guys have been on for a while, too. Feel free to do your thing, too. There's no obligation to be on here the whole time. Yes, no, yes, by all means. We well, appreciate you being on for an hour and a half with us, guys. This is great. <laughs> I'm going to touch one. Oh, yeah, go right ahead. There we I, go. In Germany, I made comic books. Wow. And uh, wow. nobody knows about it. Huh? And, uh, yeah, this was, I had a career in Germany. 
but then I came to New York and had another one. <laughs> what made you come to New York, Tom? Why did you make that move from Germany to New York? Was it a professional move for your for your artwork, or was it a personal move? Personal. I just fell in love, and that's it. I just fell in love with a girl from New York. Uh, I was going to say, probably a lady. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do yeah. it every time. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. why I came. Otherwise, I mean, for my career, it was, it didn't look good in the beginning. But then, uh, I don't know. I had a lot of luck. Well, well, we're glad I, you're here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. I'm very, I'm very happy with, you know, how things went. So you that's got good. a hell of a life going, man. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, Jeff, yeah. you got anything awesome to show us? Um, you want something old or new? Both, man. Let's go. Throw it up. Hey, Pac-Man, let's do that. <laughs> website with uh, uh, GPK Land. And uh, you can go into the website and you can scroll across um, this GPK um, interactive um, um, town. It was like GPK town or something like that. Was anybody around during those days? <laughs> I guess not. No one ever heard of it. I, I remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. Those were the old Garbage Hill Kids Underground days. Yeah, but it was actually, you know, uh, when garbage or when Tops actually try to make a website for a garbage pail kit that was interactive, like a um, almost like a, um, a video game, and it was. It was mm -hmm. animated. You would walk down these. Oh, here's one here. Um, or here's one for this where they, I think they made it to um, the part where they get to the amusement park, but. Um, so I had to plan it out for them to scroll. So I still have it. Um, so it first starts with the city. And then um, you'll see they get into an amusement park. And I actually took the card images and just pasted it on them. And then um, they had animators, I think, uh, copy this. That's cool. And um, Wow, that's and then, amazing. When they that's get cool. on the track. And then I would write animated ideas. This was a Tom Buck that Tom Buck and I did of the, uh, and they animated it was the uh, the shark throwing up the kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's I always awesome. like that one. But um, so that's a, like a really oldie but goodie thing. And there's another part that uh, shows a lot of A and <laughs> Tell it, Toby. <laughs> That's awesome. This this is amazing. I like how you did cut out the cards. That's awesome. And it was just how to tie them all together for an animated thing. And as far as uh, again, because I'm trying to push the the new series. And Let's go. You got to see how uh, Chris eats this page. But right now, I'd rather just show the pencils so you guys could go out and get Chris inks and see how it looks. Um, that cake. But here. That looks really good of the that is awesome. Uh, you guys are doing an incredible job on this comic, Jeff, Chris. If Dustin Watt is this it's outstanding. It's it's absolutely amazing. The artwork is absolutely amazing. And what I love about it is it's the classic characters, but it's like a new style. You know what I mean? It's not the exact same John Pound original OS looking style. You've put your own spin on it, and they're really beautiful characters that you've come up with. Well, uh this, this whole new first issue, well, all of them, um, we got to sort of go back to the John Pound style and stuff because there's so many John Pound um, characters that come out and, and Tom Buck characters that come out in these um, first few issues. So um, there's so many cameos. It's unbelievable. Chris and I are so busy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Chris, show me some artwork, man. Show us show right. something you're doing because we love your stuff, man. No big deal. Well, like, uh, see, I got like on, uh, on my table here. I'm drawing while I'm talking to you guys. I got Ultraman. Wow. Can you see that? Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. Your detail work is amazing, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Uh, you see that? This is the uh, charity card. Wow. So the Rancho Obi Wan. Childish Gambino. Hey, Chris, do you prefer drawing realistic or um, what kind of style is your favorite? Oh, it really depends. You know, like for a week, I like the realistic and then uh, get bored of it and I like to do garbage for kids. I know what you, you mean. Know, at least, so at least doing multiple stuff, I get tired of it. I can try something else. So here's a piece I did for Gears of War. Me and a guy did it for a, I don't know if you can see that's huge. What? Wow. Anyway, that was for uh, a competition to uh, do a screensaver for him, and we came in third. Wow. You came in third? Yeah. Holy crap. The winner must have been freaking incredible. That's it amazing. It was all digital. You know, I was still doing pen and ink stuff. Holy crap. That is beautiful, man. Thanks, man. Ooh. And then I just did this uh, festival poster for a local music festival. It's called the Hot Water Hills. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Wow. Look at your lettering. That lettering's beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. Wow. I see you did the coloring for it. It's so groovy, kind of. You know, it's a groovy. Man. <laughs> I don't know if you see the possum at the bottom there. <laughs> take him on later. Do they color it? Somebody else colors it or something? No, Sandy colored it. Sandy's Chris's wife. She's an yep. equally talented artist, and she wow, does yeah. amazing color work. If you guys don't oh, yeah. know, yeah, she used to do like a crochet artwork and had her stuff in the Smithsonian. That was before I did anything. Wow. No, no big deal, right? <laughs> no big deal, just Smithsonian. <laughs> Chris was telling me stories a while ago about Sandy actually taught him a lot about his coloring work. Chris is an ink master, as we all know, and he yeah. wasn't very good with coloring at all. And his wife, Sandy, they both went to art school. That's how you guys met. Is that correct? In art school? Oh, yeah, yeah. We met on the first day of painting class. Yeah. And, you know, she was taking color theory. And I was like, I don't need that. And then now I was like, show me how to make a red. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So, so Sandy taught Chris a lot about coloring and blending and stuff like that. And Chris, Chris shared that story with me, and I thought that was pretty amazing. I loved hearing that story. As a matter of fact. Wow. So, Mr. Bobby B, you got any artwork there you can show off, brother? Sculptures, artworks, anything that's not um, secret. I've got things. Uh, most people may have seen them if they're subscribed to my YouTube channel. This is some I'm currently working on. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> A ginormous, um, trying to get there. Now, the is, this clay is this resin? How did you this do that? This is resin. Uh, yeah, this is painted resin. It's kind of packed with a, a real clock in there. This is the second one I made. The first one, I siliconed uh, just clock parts in there, and the clock just couldn't keep the time, which That's is awesome. just, just what you need. It's right two, two times a day. <laughs> So this is a new one that I've I made like a cast of the original clock that I that I did and um, so yeah this is kind of a repainted one but I'm still taking my time with it just because I've got so many other things on my plate it's kind of sitting on the back burner um, there's things that I've made that just never you may have seen it if you're in the the grooves mm -hmm. but. I didn't get a, a YouTube video made of making them just because I didn't have any space on my phone at the time. Um, but yeah, just mini, mini projects like that. There's stuff. Um, that's cool. That that channel, that wow, that's cool, Ooh. dude. All that's a bit too All detailed. This one. Oh, <laughs> you just can't really make out anything in it. But um Amazing. Yeah, lots of little things like that. I've got wow. more wooden boxes wow. that I've made. I made all these yeah, quite those a while so ago, cool. so I feel like I've gotten slightly better since making them. You don't I'm... have one in your hands like I do. You just don't understand how cool those things are. So people this one I made. So people was... put their weed in there or something? or what? <laughs> it's What's that? And those boxes, people just put their feet in it or something, or yeah, did you not see Joey <laughs> enjoying that little spliff? And 
<laughs> Show yourself. Dad got it's turned it. into a bong. <laughs> yeah, she's having a good time. <laughs> I got this I sketch from. Box. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Vincenzo and I made this sculpture. It was one of the first ones I did, um, just to hold the sketch. Dave, I can't get you off the big screen. I'm there. We go. I'm trying to put Bobby back on. Bobby, show that again. I had Dave on there. See, yeah, I got this sketch off Vincenzo when I went to one of the geek extravaganzas, and then I made this sculpture to hold it. And that was probably one of the first sculptures I made, just so I could have this sketch displayed. And then my collection's so got cool. so big, I couldn't have sculptures to hold everything unfortunately but i do have a quite a ton i tend to make them and just stick them on my shelf they never get sold but that's one of my biggest issues i i lack so much confidence in what i do but i i kind of getting better at being more and more confident with with stuff i suppose as i get better as as i feel i'm getting better so bobby are those, are those yeah. all hand sculpted or are those molded how do you how do you do those they're all hand hand sculpted, then hand painted. Um, I've kind of come up with a new technique for some of these newer sculptures that I'm making. So I've got this is a commission that I'm trying to make. It's it's taken quite a while. This is for someone that's possibly in the the chat. So this was a first attempt. I bet you it's who I just put up on the screen. I'll bet you money that's, that's for cool. Megan, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you can see the thickness of that one, and then I've started making them so I've been able to do them really thin to, to be able to fit them in stuff. But essentially, I, I start out with the drawing. So, here's another one that I've working for someone else that's in the chat. I'll start, I'll draw the character on a card, and then I'll, I'll kind of bake a super thin piece of clay on top of that. So, I've then got the drawing on the clay. And then I can kind of start sculpting the drawing, if that makes sense. I don't know if you can really see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it comes out nice. Um, I've got some other ones I was working on. It's not quite as good. It was, it was meant to be a Freddy. Oh, come on, man. That's for me, though. Right? <laughs> Was that a guess? Possibly. I mean, th th I've had a couple of iterations of that one. The first one looked terrible. Not going to lie. It's here somewhere. I say it looks terrible. I'm just, sometimes I'm really harsh on myself, but I think you've got to be for the most oh, part. Okay. I mean, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> you can send that to me, Bobby. I'll, I'll love it, man. <laughs> You'll put it on his wall behind him. <laughs> Got a spot right behind his head. I've got every one of the artists that's on the live stream. I got a slasher asher right here. I'm pointing to all of them. These are all my ashers from all these guys. If you guys can't see them, so so I do have one more person. Are you showing something else, Bobby? Yeah, show some just, stuff here. This is just um, I had a commission to make a bony Tony Pop Funko, um, which I think I've got a video for, and I was waiting for the bony Tony Pop Funko to be released. So whilst I was waiting, I sculpted one it doesn't look great but um there's parts of it that i really like parts i don't like at all but um i tend to use it just as a a mini reminder <laughs> so it's always sat at the back of my desk <laughs> awesome, that's man. awesome i love your sculpting work i love again that it's a different medium other than just something on paper you know that's, that's really neat and i'd love to see tops and fanatics kind of bring some of that stuff to life and put it out there. We're getting a few more toys and we're getting a few different things other than cards, but something like that would, would just be amazing. I mean, I know you hand do them, so that's gotta be tough, but amazing work, brother. That, that stuff's beautiful. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. I'm going to have to sign off. Hey, Bob, I, I love your, your work. It's, it's, it's amazing. It looks so time consuming, but you Thank you. <laughs> work. it's, it's, it's uh, remarkable. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, Jeff, listen. I was going to say, Johnny, we're about that one an hour, one and yep. a half hour mark. We'll start kind of signing off. Yep. We'll get, we'll get you guys out of here. We appreciate your time. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and tell some stories and spend some time with us. I'll we, wait for to wrap up. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, we, Okay, we, cool, man. Hey, and another thing. Thanks for bringing these guys to us. That was awesome. We hit you up first, and you went way above and out of your way to hit these guys up to come hang out. You know, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to thank Tom Bump for coming by. And, um, yeah, uh, thank you very much. 
It's nice to meet you all. Oh, definitely, man. Thanks for coming out and talking to everybody. This was absolutely epic. Like, we had a great time. We heard some great stories. We, I mean, this is just incredible. I can't wait till afterwards. John and I get all the fun when everybody hits us up and tells us how great of a time it was. Right. Yeah. I have one personal favor. Very quickly before we sign off, Jeff, will you tell us just any good story you have about Jay Lynch as quick as you can? Uh, just tell us something funny we don't know because Jay was a friend of both of ours and he was an amazing human being and I'd love to hear just something it would just be great to have um, Jay Lynch just knock on your door and he always would have the same little briefcase and he would have his jeans and a thermal type of uh, coat with um, all types of pens already in his in there and the, at the briefcase all it had was like a bunch of uh, rapidograph pens and some paper, and maybe one comic book or something. But he, but he would hold it like it was like um, um, a secret plan. Or something. it was. And what was also great was he would just he would knock on the door and bring me a Big Mac and some sort of type of Twinkie type of thing. Um, right. On. He loved like uh, he loved that stuff. So I would every time he um, he, he would stay in my house, I would find like Big Macs and. Um, um, pastries you know like box pastries of some type in in the fridge so um you know i miss them greatly and uh you know i had some artwork but i'm not gonna show that but um yeah you know uh, it's like i said uh, guys like tom bunk and jay lynch and they're from a uh um a classier generation not a classier but from a classy generation of artists that i feel very honored to have learned and um be able to rub elbows with Amazing. Tom, do you have anything good to, about Jay? Do you have a good story off the top of your head before we go? And this will be it. We'll sign everybody out and get everybody out of here. Well, I saw a lot of his artwork, but I met him in, in the 90s. We went together to the comic convention in San Diego uh, with John Pound. And uh, we had a wonderful time together. Uh, I was with him. We lived in a motel. And all I remember, he was just talking without stopping, and he was smoking, had to go out and smoke. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was a very intense person, but uh, very, very sweet. Yeah. Love Jay Lynch. Well, yeah. again, to our artist friends, uh, Mr. Zapata, Mr. Bunk, Mr. Meeks, Mr. Ball. You guys have been amazing. I, I think that our viewers have really enjoyed these. I, I love hearing these stories. Um, just just an amazing stream. And we're so thankful for you guys to take time out of your day and out of your Saturday to come on with us. And, you know, we, we really can't thank you enough for being here. Yeah, thank okay. you, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bobby, thank Jeff, you, Chris. Everybody. It's been an honor uh, to see everybody's <laughs> artwork here. So thank you. Yeah. Same, same for everyone. And John and I will pop on, stay on for a minute or two after you guys get out of here and give a little bit of a see you later to them guys. But like John said, thank you everybody for doing this. Everybody, even though watching, everybody appreciated Thanks, this. Guys. It was nice. Anytime. Thank you. Take care. Bobby, you're welcome back anytime, brother. You know that. You're all welcome back anytime. Yeah, everybody. See you later. Bye. Thank you, Tom. Tom, Chris, you guys have been absolutely amazing for us. Thank you, guys. Send my love Thank to Sandy, you. Chris. Bye, Tom. Thank you so much. Man, yeah. what? So that just happened. Yeah, that was an absolute great time. Thank you for our guests. We got some pretty intimate stories there. We got, oh, just absolutely incredibleness, like. I, I'm in jitters. I still got to go live after this and do some garbage shoot droid opening. And I'm just that was but, that was amazing. Uh, everybody that's watching live right now, thank you guys for coming out with us. Um, you know we're trying to do these next Saturday. I think we're gonna do another one if as long as you know everybody wants us to. I, if Big D's down, we've already got artists that are lined up and signed on and want to show up. So you know we're looking forward to doing this again next week, meeting some new people hearing some new stories from more artist friends, getting some artwork out there. You know, we we do put a lot of time into this. It's not as easy as reaching out and being like, hey, let's let's do a live stream. You down? You know, we got to reach out to these folks all week. Dave and I have been putting time and work into this. 
and and it's it is a lot of fun for us, but it's a lot of work. And as long as you folks are enjoying it, that's what this is all about. This isn't about me and Dave. This is about the artists, and this is about the community, and this is about you guys getting to meet these guys. And so we want to help you start making content. Hit me up; I'll help you. That's right. <laughs> You know, show your artists some love, guys. If it wasn't for these guys, we wouldn't have a hobby to be passionate about. So on that note, I'm out of here. Later, um, we'll gentlemen. See you guys soon. Thank you so much. And we're out.